Hello again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I promised a while back on another video to describe the way that I use liquid feed as part of my fertilizer program here on the farm and I do prefer to apply it with a hose end sprayer like this. I'm going to go into that in a minute. I think the topic is one of those ones where you could just go with the pat answer. Go to the store, buy a powder, use as directed, but I think we can do a little bit better than that and I'm going to start with showing you how to measure the concentration of your liquid feed. To learn how to best use your liquid feed fertilizer, I want to introduce you to this meter here, which is an electrical conductivity meter. Electrical conductivity measures the salt level or the fertilizer salt level that's in the water and the higher the concentration, the higher the reading. So I want to show you that even coming out of the tap, this water is not entirely pure of salts and you can see just even coming out of the tap here it's coming up with a measurement of 0.13 and my experience has shown me that if I use the liquid feed fertilizer the powder which is usually comes to you uh, brightly colored like this either bright pink or bright blue and if I put in a full tablespoon I'll try to level that off. This is a half tablespoon measure, so I'll have to do two of these. And if you put in a full tablespoon back into that gallon, what I usually end up with is a number somewhere around 3.5. I'm going to stir this around and put it back in. With that liquid feed fully dissolved, let's give it a test here and see how close we are. And not bad. Pretty close to exactly what I always test when I put in a tablespoon of the liquid feed fertilizer. 3.5 would be a little bit heavy if that's what you were growing your plant in entirely. So if that were the only water that were in your pot, it would be quite heavy. Therefore the instructions that are given by the manufacturer are that this concentration here is usually for outdoor plants. We're pouring a little bit of water like this around the base of an outdoor plant. will give it a boost that it needs but has a large volume of soil and a large volume of soil water to dissolve into plus it's raining out there you're doing other waterings so it's not too strong. They usually recommend that if you're using your liquid feed indoors that you use it at a rate that is one sixth that amount. So probably instead of point or 3.5 you're probably talking about an amount that's just over 0.5 and you'll use that in your house plants on a routine basis. As powerful a tool as I think it is to understand your EC there are limitations to this so your customization has to come with a little common sense. For instance your EC meter can't tell you the difference between your commercially prepared nutrient solution, fish fertilizer, which would be rather good for your plants, or table salt, which would be rather bad for your plants. Outside now, let me show you how you can combine this with another tool. This is called a hose end dialer or a hose end mixer that will help you to customize your liquid feed to whatever you want it to do. So inside of this cup, you would mix a fertilizer solution. It uses a siphon like this to pull up the solution and mix it with your hose water at a specified rate up in this top portion here before it sprays it out in one of the patterns that you'd like. You can see that the dial dials all the way up from on the bottom here it's three or off and at the very top it goes all the way up 
to 55. And you get quite a range there. So if you mix a stock solution, you can spray it through quite strong if you're applying to a plant that is a heavy feeder or seems to need it. And you can dial it way down to a weak solution for, say, new seedlings or a plant that doesn't need quite so much. So into the cup here, I mix the stock solution. And the stock solution in my case, I do it at, I'm hoping you catch the numbers on the side there, but it is around 100 mils. Well, that's about uh, also six tablespoons, or a little over six tablespoons, or just under half a cup. And that number that I'm using, I just use it to be consistent. It's rather arbitrary. Uh, you can see that from the stock solution that miracle Grow talks about, that that would be just around um, six full gallons at full strength, uh, or quite a bit more at a reduced strength or a dilution. So um, then that, that gives me the flexibility to not have to go and mix over and over and over again. And you could certainly put in a bit more and even spray at, or even have to fill this a lot less frequently. Now that I've put in the powder, I'm going to add in the liquid, then screw it on and give it a little bit of time to dissolve. After that, I'll show you how to use your EC meter to test what's coming out of the end of this sprayer. Okay, it's all mixed here. And even at the highest rate on the dial here, 55, when I spray this through, I still only get an EC of about 1.75 or 1.76. And that's fine with me. I actually don't want to run this at an extremely high strength. So what I really actually prefer in my most of my growing situations is to dial it down to about 42. And at 42, I get an EC just above 1.0. And I'll show you why I like to do it, but at that rate, you can see, obviously, I get an awful lot out of this container. I don't, it, I don't have to refill that very frequently when I'm taking it at that concentration. I mentioned in my previous video on fertilizer that the way I prefer to fertilize plants in containers, particularly my roses in containers, is that I use a slow release coated fertilizer like this, this Osmocote or the coated type fertilizers that release over the course of three or four months. But I also like to use them at the low end of the recommended rate. The reason I do that is because they can vary quite a lot in how fast they release based on temperature and moisture. So if you get a uh, a warm humid patch you can actually have this release a little bit stronger um, so I, I like to put it in at the lowest rate recommended on the package and then I can watch the plants and see and then I can top up with my liquid feed fertilizer as needed as I can see whether the foliage is coming in a little bit pale or whether it's just not performing the way I'd like to then I can add a little bit of liquid fertilizer without having that risk of burning it outright it's also handy that during those times of year where I'm not actively fertilizing plants in the greenhouse but then I find plants that are blooming and I go okay great then I can just pop on the hose end sprayer and give them a little bit of extra fertilizer. One other way that having this combination of the hose end sprayer and the EC meter is really handy is then you can play around and experiment with other single fertilizers. So if you suspected a magnesium deficiency based on the condition of the plant, or if you wanted to pump up the levels of calcium, you could go with fertilizers like calcium nitrate or magnesium sulfate and add those into your liquid feed and just see how they do. It gives you a little bit of room to play around. On If you're doing those single fertilizers though, I would dial it down a fair ways because you really don't want a high PPM or a high EC of a single fertilizer, you might overfeed the plant for one nutrient or another. I guess I can anticipate one other question coming from this, which is what if you wanted to go ahead and use a hose end sprayer like this one, but that you didn't want to go out and buy an expensive EC meter. And I guess my point on that would be that once you're not testing the rates that you're putting out, you do have to default back to the manufacturer's guidelines on what to use. If you're using 
it in conjunction with this coated fertilizer, then what I would say is once again, use your coated fertilizer at the lowest recommended rate and then maybe cut down the liquid feed rate to half strength or quarter strength just to top up the, uh, the granules. All right, thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions about fertilizer or anything else about growing, I'll leave those in the comments below and thank you so much for watching.